Hello, everybody. Happy Friday, and welcome to our last day of Bachelor Nation news in 2023. Unless there's breaking news over the weekend, which could happen, hit the subscribe button. Listen, if you like Bachelor content, you gotta love these interviews. I'm gonna be sharing Chris Harrison on Jason Tartik's podcast. We hear Chris Harrison discuss his breakup from Bachelor Nation the way Jason Tartik discussed his breakup from Caitlin Bristow. You know, something that's close, that you love, that you're passionate about, ripped away from you. His answers are interesting. Now, it's always clickbaity. It'd be like, oh, he feels like he had to remove himself from some crazy toxic, toxic situation. He says plenty of things in this interview that are very interesting that he hasn't said before regarding his negotiations and how he deals with the show and all that. Definitely go check it out. Trading Secrets with Jason Tartik. Follow me on Instagram at Neils. A special thank out to everyone who came to my stand-up show last night. Probably my last of 2023, unless there's any last-minute bookings. Uh, we had such a good time and uh, to everyone who came out and stayed and talked after the show, thank you guys so much. You know, really appreciate you. All right, follow me on Patreon. We just hit 700 members. It's absolutely insane. We'll be live on Patreon at the 10 a.m. hour, patreon.com slash Dave Neal. And every morning and afternoon, Bachelor Rush Hour, the hit podcast, we'll have our final afternoon rush hour this afternoon. Okay, we'll be back Monday for New Year's, and we're not going to skip a beat here. We're working. I got diapers to buy, folks. All right? Okay, let's get into it. So as you guys know, big fan of Jason Tartik's podcast. I love the fact they talk numbers. Chris Harrison talked initially about uh, his low pay the first few years of being the host. Then finally, by the time he was uh, uh, finishing up being a host, a seven-figure contract, making millions of dollars a year. Of course, we know he signed something like an $8 million exit deal to leave the show amidst that whole scandal that happened several years ago. So we're going to get into that, but let's just play a few clips of uh, some other small talk, some interesting moments I thought I listened to from this podcast. And he's like, the host of my show can't drive a used <laughs> Nissan Altima. I said, well, let me tell you something, dude, with what you're paying me, this is what I can afford. So unless you buy me a new car or, you know, and by the way, he had, you know, his agency and, or the network that got him a, they bought him a brand new Porsche. They bought uh, him like a big screen TV for a big thank you gift. And I'm like, all right, where, you know, this trickle down, right? Trickle down yeah, theory, right? You know, Reaganomics. No, no, uh, that's not how that worked. Interesting. Uh, their job and look, any, any business and, and our business is the same. Their job is to give you as little as possible and make you do as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Every industry in the world, that's the same thing. They want to pay you as little as possible. So they make more, but they want to take every ounce of sweat equity you have well let and don't forget the cast of the show isn't getting paid either so he's talking this from a point as the host where he's still getting paid a good amount but you know you want to get paid as much you know if he's doing well the producers are doing 10x what he's doing like the creators of the show so of course that negotiating is hard to do until the show cemented itself as like a must-see tv show let me ask you this then because i think that makes a lot of sense but just in austin for, for sergio's event i interviewed sergio blown away to learn that when he won the masters the check was only 1.2 million yeah. yes 1.2 million is a lot when you think about perspective the value of what the masters brings and everything else 1.2 is nothing he said the true value comes in brand endorsements and opportunities after i think about people from the show people i know a lot of them are making well into the seven figures from great endorsements the businesses they built the podcast they have etc were you able to monetize outside the show with like brand collaborations, brand endorsements, things yeah. like that? That was the tough part. And I, I was a little bit, there was a little bit of jealousy with you guys. So then he goes into, you know, why he wasn't doing endorsements because he was working for the show, whereas the contestants would do an endorsement when they were no longer associated with the show. Which, by the way, you know, Jason Tartik here basically spills that the alumni are all making millions of dollars. Uh, not all, but of course, the top ones, which would mean his ex fiance is definitely in the seven figure range. My guess around 2.5 million a year. Just my guess. It might be only 1.2. I, you know, she's a poor millionaire. You know what I mean? All right, let's go to 1435 and continue listening to uh, what we've got here. Oh, and Chris gave me the nay. I said, first episode, I'm asking you how much you make. He's like, all right, bring it on. I said, how about the last episode? He goes, <laughs> go pound salt. Okay. Yeah, I so won't tell you what I, I was tried. making when I left, but I'll tell you what I made when I start. And I will tell you those two 
uh, numbers were very different. Very different. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Can you tell me hot, warm, or cold in your career once you started getting going? Were you making seven figures? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So easy seven-figure paychecks. Of course he was making seven figures. You have to remember this show was as big as plenty of network TV shows where there was like friends. They were making a million dollars an episode. Network TV was paying crazy high money. Bullseye for this statement. And I want to see your misconceptions with it. And it was... Chris Harrison has the most desirable job in the world. He comes out and he says, ladies, this is the final rose. I want you to give us a little behind the scenes of what that job looked like on a day-to-day -day basis and what the misconception is behind people saying, that's the most desirable, easiest job. I want that job. Tell us a little bit about what we don't know. Well, I guess the best way to answer that is, you know the links that they went to and who they tried to replace me with. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you know, yeah. um, everyone <laughs> behind the scenes at the show knows uh, who they, they tried to get to replace Tell me. Us. Um, the fact that none of those people would do it mm -hmm. so that, tells you how desirable the job is. Now, so I, I created the job. And at first, I was just a host. I yeah. literally was right, a talking Then he kind of blow, and, blows all the resume smoke. And I totally get it. He created the job. I and mean, it was a new job where he was just a talking head host. And then he becomes the confidant who's there whenever they have a problem. Which, again, very different from the role Jesse Palmer plays. You can only, you can only really play a role that's within yourself. And he kind of became the guy who would let people vent to him. And there's a lot that happens behind the scenes. For everyone that says, oh, you didn't do anything. You just, I mean, there's a lot more to it. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's got to be a tough job. It's just a tough job that pays really well way more than i'm home got it if and you're doing a, a, a typical day where you're filming let's say you're traveling and filming how many hours are you working in a day you think depends yeah uh, depends some days none some days i'm a tourist in, yeah. in dubrovnik croatia sure or i'm you know on a safari in south africa but yeah. I'm, I'm also on that safari by myself yeah um you know like we had young kids and my you know they can't just pick up their lives and go with me everywhere we're going mm -hmm. so they're in school and my kids start sports and all that so they have lives yeah um and so they're you know i would come and go and i became this you know I don't regret that because I was doing it for them and they will now have a great life because of that. But man, I missed a lot of weddings, birthdays, uh, you know, my kids. Birthdays were the worst days. Yeah, send me champagne. I'm, okay, so uh, yeah, I mean, look, he made a lot of money and in exchange, he his 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 relationship didn't work, right? Didn't he get divorced? I'm sure it had to do with not being able to spend time harvesting the waters of the family and that's what comes with the job in some ways and, you, you know, that's why a lot of like probably notable people don't want to do the job because it's like, ah, is it really worth it? You know, I mean, it's worth it for somebody who's trying to break into the industry, but it's not not worth it for a celebrity to do this job no way I mean, if you guys haven't listened to it go listen to the episode that i go on chris's right, podcast. here's the goods but you asked me about my former relationship which is of course no longer we know the inevitable spoiler alert <laughs> your relationship with the show yeah. is no longer do you look back at the show do you think about the show now do you love the show do you miss the show um the show is a blessing yeah. I still look at this as a blessing in my life. It, it was hard at first, obviously, I, you know, it wasn't immediate where I was, I felt great about everything. Um, cause what I went through was tumultuous and I don't wish it on anybody. And it was horrifying on a lot of levels and something that I pray to God that my worst enemy never goes through. And he's talking about the quote unquote cancellation, the uh, petitions to remove Chris Harrison following the Rachel Kirk Connell scandal that happened where photos came out. You know, we don't need to get in the whole thing. He goes on, Rachel Lindsay uh, talks to her on Extra uh, or whatever. Yeah, I think it was Extra. And it all blows up. He offers a, an apology to Michael Strahan. Michael Strahan even says, eh, I don't really buy it. And I'm sure he's like, well, what are you talking about? You know, and it becomes a whole thing. Um, a disgraceful exit. Uh, a lot of people, a good number of people think he was unceremoniously uh, dismissed and he was just doing his job. I, um, I, I side on him being in part collateral damage to people that want social change. They don't see it from the TV show. So they take it out in part on the host who's kind of like the press secretary. Like you would never fire the press secretary because you don't like what the president's doing, but that's essentially what Chris Harrison is. I've yet to hear a better analogy to what Chris Harrison represents. He represents the show. Uh, sadly, nobody even knows the name of the creator. You know, some people do. So what do they do? They go after the guy they can and the creators are all like, all right, we don't want him talking about all the 
cocaine we did in, uh, you know, uh, Dubrovnik or wherever the hell they went. You know, I'm just making that up. I don't know. But, uh, you know, we did a lot of blow in, uh, uh, you know, uh, Serbia. We need to make sure those uh, stripper photos never come out. And then they go, uh, okay, let's pay a lot of money to shut up. And we'll never hear that story. Uh, Although, if you ever see Chris Harrison drunk at an airport bar, ask him, hey, what's going on with anyone doing the booger sugar out there? You know, Uh, the old nose candy. Okay. Um, uh, but I'm not saying he was, I'm just saying you would assume there might be, be some crazy stories from a lot of alone time traveling. You know what I mean? With that said, don't sue me. I knew I had to remove myself from what was, what became a very toxic situation. And I did. And that was a difficult situation. Uh, cause it probably in the long run, I probably could have figured it out. We all could have figured it out, but I had to remove myself from that toxic situation. And so I'm proud of that decision. I'm proud that I handled it the way I did and it, I still look at it as a blessing because it changed my life on so many levels financially. Boom. Sure. Of course it changed my life. It changed my kids' lives. Um, this house we're sitting in now was built on your tears. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're good at that. Wow. But no, in, in all seriousness, I, the friends that were in this house for my wedding that you were, you attended, that happened because of the show. Yeah. And By the way, I like this studio, but this does not look like it's acoustically treated. You've essentially got Chris in front of a bare wall and then Jason in front of stone. This is not good acoustics. You need to put up with some tapestries or some uh, some sound dampening stuff. It's very rare, right? I mean, like the weird thing about my show, as opposed to being on, say, Modern Family like Sarah Hyland, mm-hmm. it's the same four people every day. Yeah. I met... 30 new people every season sure. right and then yeah. and then became a new bachelor new bachelorette new bachelor new bachelorette we go to paradise so we spent a lot of intimate time together traveling the world and that's why these people you know and we ex- and we shared a very extraordinary situation and experience that bonded us all there's things yeah. that i saw you go through yeah. that no one will ever know about yeah you know we shared that <laughs> or or like we played soccer in asia together sure. you know, we, we went yeah do a pickup game oh yeah there's just things we did that were like I'll never share with anybody else. Right. So I hold those things dear. It was a blessing. It changed my life. But at the same time, I can also be grateful that I'm gone. Yeah, and that's, absolutely. That's a relationship I, I don't need to be in anymore because it wasn't healthy. It's a perfect, perfect answer. There was great things from it. There were things you learned from it and you move on. Is it safe to say that you as the host of any of those shows, we will not see as a career navigation standpoint, that's not in your future? Going back to that show? Yeah. No. Okay. I mean, I, I, you know, I, my mom always taught me never say never. Yeah. Um, but no. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. We um, know the career direction. Yeah. And it's not in that direction. No. And but I, how I, fun would that be if, like, you know, we love Jesse Palmer, but what if Jesse Palmer I don't know, broke his ankle or what if he got the, the, the flu and he had two weeks off and they go, hey, Chris. Can we just get you to come in do do an episode? Don't even address that you're not Jesse. Pa- just come in. You know, I don't. You know, of course he they they threw him under the bus as far as the producers go. So I don't think that'll happen. And it's not that I. You know, I, I think you know they're they're still on the air. The show's still going. It's it's clearly changed, and 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 I'm sure they're trying to evolve it and make it something new and interesting. It's hard in this business once you. Once you kind of start going downhill, it's hard to get that thing back up top. Um, and that's not an indictment on anybody. It's just hard. This yeah. business is hard. Yeah. Once people go eat at a different restaurant, they're not coming back to yours anymore. And they, yeah. they have found there's other, you know, what we were always great at is everybody came after us, right? There were a million different reality shows about love and relationships. They all failed. Mm-hmm. They all took their shot at the champ and they failed. Mm-hmm. Once I left, people started taking their shots at the champ and they've succeeded. Oh, yeah. okay. It, for, it had nothing to do with Chris Harrison. Netflix was starting to get into reality TV with their huge market. It had nothing. Okay, okay, okay. A small percentage of people. I know it's allowed in the comment section. I'd stop listening when Chris Harrison. Okay, that doesn't move the ticker on the number. If you are 14.7, now you're 14.5. We're not talking about half the audience leaving. It, I don't think it had that much to do with Chris Harrison. I think it was a little bit of pandemic burnout and also poor casting and the show kind of got a little smuttier and the relationships weren't working out. There's a lot of things here. Either way, we love to hear from him and that's his perspective. Um, and uh, when I say the show threw him under the bus, you know what I talk? I talk about how the show is a corporation and it's psychopathic. They don't care about black Black Lives Matter. The show producers don't give two shits about that. They want their freaking paycheck. That's what they care about. You know what I mean? 
That's all it comes down to. And remember that for whatever company you work for, they don't care about you. All right. So get your ducks in a row. And if shit goes sideways, have a backup plan. Okay. Because in the end, they're only family because they need to play that card to keep you around. Chris Harrison will be the first to tell you about that. All right, folks, we'll be back with more content. Bats the Rush Hour this afternoon. We'll talk to you then.